Welcome to the Techno Fundamental Report for May the 9th. It ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. Mark Twain. You know, on Wall Street and investing, there's no sure deal. And you have to really research what you're doing. I'd say the most important thing I've learned over the years is the importance of patience and consistency. So... If you, don't, if you think you know something about the market, that's fine, but be careful. Anyway, we're in the throes of earnings season, and uh, we always have a lot of volatility during this period. It's been kind of a mixed report. You know, I see a lot of misses. I see a lot of hits. Realize this is the report card. This is where every 90 days uh, we're given a report card on the company, and the most important part of the report card is, is when management discusses future projects and future events and they come out with that in the third or in the quarterly reports now the movie Braveheart if you remember uh, Mel Gibson would say hold just hold which is patience and you know if you go back and look at earnings reports of the past like this is Apple and this is 2003 this is uh, when they announced their uh, second quarter their first quarter results for 2003 you got a gap up in that price, and you can see technically what happened. So this is where the management came out and said, we have an iPhone, and we think it's going to revolutionize the world. So that was a good one. Anyway, back to demographics. When we look at you know, this particular report here, it talks about the prime time for the prime working ages between ages 25 and 54. And this is where we are now. Uh, the oldest millennials are 43, the youngest are 28. Then the second kicker here, and this is why this demographic study could be more meaningful than the baby boomers, because now you've got the Generation Z coming in behind them with ages of 27 and youngest being 12. But then there's another factor. There's actually three factors here. One is the millennials, Generation Z, but then the baby boomers, you don't want to forget about the baby boomers because there's something very different here. Uh, this article was sent to me by a good friend and it says the affluent older people drive economy. Well, one of the reasons we think that it's going to be a continuing flow of cash into the markets and into consumption, because if you really think about the economy, it's all based on consumption is the IRA required minimum distribution, which means that the baby boomers are now being required as of, you know, this, this says age 70 and a half. The rule has been changed. I believe it's now 72, and it might go to 73. But anyway, it, it means that there's going to be a lot more consumption than we, than we realize even from the past because if we go back and just kind of reflect here for a minute, you had that major consumption cycle between 1982 and 2000, which led to a great bull market. We're in a similar situation here because, the, you know, the millennials, the Generation Z, and the required minimum distributions are definitely going to be a driving force. Also, I wanted to mention that uh, I saw this article. It says AI could drive a natural gas boom as power companies face surging electricity demand. These data centers that they're going to need to build all over the world use an enormous amount of electricity. In fact, I've heard that, uh, as just a way to get it into perspective, that by within two years, the amount of electricity needed to run these data centers would be the same as the amount of electricity to run the whole country of the Netherlands. So anyway, it's a big deal. I think uh, that's one of the ways to play AI which would be things like natural gas possibly, electric utilities even, and uh, other areas would be things like copper. We're, we're actually looking at copper. Now I wanted to go over some uh, particular ETFs. These are what we call growth ETFs. This is the Renaissance IPO. This is all the companies that have gone public within the last couple of years. And you know I've been monitoring this and noticing that you know, we're still in the yellow here because I've got this set up where we've got the trend meter here. So we're going to talk about the small caps and the growth stocks, but we are seeing a little bit of a breakout here 
we need to continue to watch these. This is a, another one. This is a ETF made up of stocks of high momentum. These are high uh, momentum growth stocks. Again, a little bit of improvement here where we're actually going into the green. This is a fund called the QQQQE, which is an equally weighted NASDAQ 100, which is kind of a, a good way to look at it. But again, you can kind of see where we've made the turn. However, it really would be nice to see this breaking into new highs and moving in this direction. Now, the most important thing, guys is the and gals, the primary trend is up. The 200-day moving average is a very important moving average in both indexes. Both the S&P and the NASDAQ continue to stay above the 200. So looks like a bull market. Now let's talk a little bit about the small caps. You can see here with the small caps, they've really been underperforming. And ever since that bear market of 2022, we came down and we've been base building ever since. Now we, we've broken out of this box. Now we, we pulled back here recently, but we held, the, we held the upper level and we're starting to rally. Now the problem here is, is on a relative basis. Now this is an absolute number. This is just the Russell 2000, which is an index of small cap stocks. Now remember, these are generally speaking companies that don't make money. But you know, when Amazon went public and Apple went public, they really weren't making a whole lot of money either. In fact, Amazon was losing money. So sometimes in order to catch something early, you have to speculate on, okay, the company's not making money now, but will it make money in the future? Now on a relative basis, this is where I'm comparing the Russell 2000 to the S&P 500. And you can see here, the Russell ever since the bear market of 22 and even before, it's been underperforming for a very long period of time. This is what's going to be critical to getting this market going is to start to see some outperformance of the Russell 2000 or the small caps. Now, like I said, on an absolute basis, we're looking okay, but on a relative basis, really not looking that strong. We need to continue to monitor though. Here's a couple of stocks that would be in the uh, area, you know, growthy area. This is Vertive Holdings. Again, they make thermal control systems. So as we mentioned earlier about how there's going to be so much electricity needed for these data centers, Vertive has a solution, which is where they can come into a data center and basically cool it down. You can see here in a nice uptrend, holding above those moving averages, got a nice little base building here, a breakout above this level, well, actually, even a breakout from here, it's already somewhat broken out. I'm just not seeing the convincing volume. That's the, the problem here. Relative strength is fine on both cases. Trend meter is fine. However, we need to see the buyers really come in with some conviction. Here's Invent Electric. Now, this is another company based in London that does thermal control systems. So you can see that this AI uh, need for electricity and the reduction of heat is, is a very big business. And so you can see here stock somewhat forming a nice base, uh, breaking out here. We're getting the volume signature here. That's very powerful. So you're starting to see where it's breaking out on above average volume, which is good. Trend meter's fine. Both relative strengths are fine. So last but least, let's look at one called Carpenter Technology. This is steel. Uh, all the steel stocks, the metal stocks, the industrial stocks are looking somewhat good. In fact, they're outperforming. You can see here we got the gap up. We're up in the green. We got good relative strength. And we got a gap up and what we call an ascending flag. So the, the name of the game with this one, I would be, would want to see it build a shelf and then break out of that shelf. Anyway, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much.